Grace Dillo and I am a graduating senior in the English department at Butler University. Today I want to talk to you about my research on an adaptation of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Frankenweenie is a 2012 stop action film written and produced by Tim Burton. Over the years, Frankenstein has moved away from the story we all know as a social critique of science and the overwhelming concern that science will replace religion. Shelley had a fear that people would use science to play God, and she wanted to send a warning to others that this was not the way to go about it, that religion was the way to find truth, and that others would be punished if they used science for their own, their own advancement. Movies and annotations of other mediums of the novel have evolved as cultures have evolved. Carolyn Joan S. Pickart wrote that Frankenstein's story has evolved to a point where only the most superficial details are still a part of Frankenstein's portrayal. She called this portrayal Frankensteinian. Its superficial details were used to produce stories that were not like what uh, Shelley intended. The inauthenticity created a hybrid genre. I agree with Pickart's point because as Frankenstein has moved through time, we have created a new type of Frankenstein. We especially see this in something like Frankenweenie, which is a story about a young boy rather than a self-obsessed mad scientist. We see this in the fact that he is playing with his beloved dog rather than messing with the God complex that Shelley was so fearful of. As we continue to march through time, we get more and more crossover of Frankenstein in genres of tragedy, love stories, science fiction, and even children's cinema. As we move through this, we are moving away from the horror genre that many of us have been talking about all semester. We've been trying to decide if Frankenstein is fitting for the horror genre at all. But my question is not about this old Frankenstein, it's about this new Frankenstein that we have created that only slightly resembles what Shelley intended. In Frankenweenie and stories of its kind, we are not losing the morality of Frankenstein though. Rather than having a horrific depiction, we are seeing morality portrayed in different ways. We are trying to teach our future generations in our children, compassion, acceptance of grief, and responsibility. Mary Shelley might not have intended to be this ambiguous with her Frankenstein creature, but as a society, we've decided that we're scared by other things, and we don't need that as a depiction anymore. Frankenweenie takes place in a small town called New Holland. It follows young Victor Frankenstein and his one and only best friend, Sparky. Frankenstein has been alienated by his peers because of his obsession, as some call it, with scientific experiments. However, this place to his advantages when his beloved Sparky is hit by a car unexpectedly. He is able to reanimate his best friend with the help of lightning, just as we see in the original Frankenstein story. However, things go awry when his classmates find out what he has been doing with his spare time. He didn't want anybody to know about his beloved Sparky being back from the dead, which is understandable, because when other students realize what they can do to their own pets for their own self-advancement, they proceed to bring their pets back to life. They go to the cemetery, they dig them up, and they create monsters of their own, creatures of their own, because they want to win a science fair. In the end, it is up to Sparky and Victor Frankenstein to rescue the town. However, Sparky is killed again as he's trying to save the town. Only after Victor Frankenstein is able to accept the death of his beloved pet is he able to reanimate his corpse once more, but this time with the help and the acceptance of the town. Frank and Weenie plays with the classic horror elements that many of us have come to know through Frankenstein, the original. The classic elements include black and white film, the emphasis of lurking in the shadows, grotesque figures, 
thunder, lightning, black cats, and cemeteries. However, Catherine Lester tells us that rather than the grotesque figures of the disproportionate children being the most horrific element of this film, the loss of the main character's best friend is what we truly find terrible. The script has been flipped in this adaptation of Frankenstein. The children embody the characters and the elements that Shelley was trying to portray in her original creation. The children are not self-obsessed, although they do falter and they make mistakes because they are children. But Victor Frankenstein is truly coming from a place of love when he reanimates his best friend. Rather than wanting to take the credit for himself, he wants to keep his pet safe. While the, children, the other children are using reanimation as a means to gain glory, they are punished in the end because their beloved pets are turned into monsters and they are forced to kill them with the help of Victor. In the end, Victor must save the town and good prevails over evil. Sparky is Shelley's creature but rather than having to find some sort of sympathy as Lester touches on in another article, we see Sparky from the very beginning as a lovable creature. He doesn't need to learn anything because he is resurrected with his same compassion for his owner as before. He has fear in the same way that the original Frankenstein monster did, but he doesn't use it for evil. He doesn't get scared and he does not get abandoned, which there is potential for because Victor Frankenstein, as a young boy, has to leave his Sparky every day to go to school. In the end, he defends everyone from the evil bat cat and saves the day with the help of his creator. The town alienates Victor and they reject his creature, but they are very uh, quick to change their tune when they realize that they are their only hope for survival of these evil monsters. And when Sparky sacrifices himself to save the mayor's niece and her beloved dog. However, Burton still allows us to look critically at science. Though science always holds an air of mystery that inherently makes us uncomfortable, we are also intrigued by the power that it holds. In this short clip that I'm going to show you, Victor's science teacher attempts to defend himself and science, and he doesn't do very well. disappears. 
years in the end. He is teaching this child the difference between good and evil, but he says that science is not good or bad, and that it can be used in both ways, and that is why you always have to be careful. The move away from horror and towards this hybrid genre that Lester calls children's horror have demonstrated a wider accessibility for stories such as Frank and Weenie. She writes that the theme of acceptance is identified in each one of these films, and in su subsequent examples of the subgenre, whether the acceptance of monsters, of other people, or the consumption of horror genre as a valid pastime for children. All three of these are seen in Frank and Weenie. Able to come to terms with Sparky's death, is he able to resurrect him once more? This is an important part of growing up for Frank and, or for Victor in the movie. And as Frankenstein has evolved, it's no longer a means of portraying a warning to us, but rather it is a means of portraying morality to our children. Morality is still the goal with Frankenstein in whatever medium that we, we decide as a society to portray it in. Thank you.